South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol opened a two-day summit today with dozens of African leaders. Yoon says his country will expand development aid to Africa and pursue deeper cooperation with the region on critical minerals and technology. VOA Korean service reporter Yoon Jan Chow says in return, South Korea will expect to get access to Africa's vast natural resources, especially minerals. South Korea looks to tap into the African continent's rich mineral resources and potential as a vast export market. Um, South Korea is one of the world's largest energy buyers. Um, South Korea, which imports about 95% of its industrial minerals last year. Um, And South Korea imported this uh, industrial mineral um, from China mostly. So if South Korea can diversify the mineral source to Africa, that would be a great opportunity for South Korea, especially because South Korea is a leading semiconductor producer, uh, home to um, many companies that produces chips. So South Korea really needs this mineral um, import. And that is one of the agreements also made between South Korea and the African leaders for the sustainable supply chain of mineral goods. Is President Yoon asking the African heads of state to get involved politically at all and, and take South Korea side? Yes, in fact, um, Yoon Song Yeol, President Yoon Song Yeol, actually said this explicitly when he met with the African leaders. He asked the African countries to take firmer steps in international pressure against North Korea. Um, So far, South Korea has only been focusing on big powers like China, United States, and Russia to um, exert pressure against North Korea. But South Korea has recently realized the importance of other countries as well. And South Korean President Yoon Song Yeol's goal is to become the global pivotal state meaning that it wants to play a global role and, you know, be friend with other countries as well and not just big powers. And especially Africa, because there are so many countries, 55 countries on the continent, and that takes up about a quarter of 193 members of the United Nations. And that all translates into votes. So when you're at United Nations, you want to come up with new resolutions against North Korea and South African countries can play a big role in its voting power. What about these Korean investments in Africa? Does South Korea already have quite a few companies operating in in some African nations? And if so, where might these places be? According to South Korea's International Trade Association, from 2000 to 2023, there were some 691 new Korean companies established in Africa and invested some 5.8 billion U.S. dollars. Of course, that's only a handful if you consider there are 55 countries in Africa. So that's why South Korea looks to establish more companies in Africa and have more trade relations there. In the most recent five years, from 2019 to 2023, South Korean companies invested mainly in mining and manufacturing in African countries such as Madagascar, Liberia, and Egypt. That was VOA Korea service reporter In Jang Chow. She was speaking with my colleague, Carol Van. Somalia will expel thousands of Ethiopian troops stationed in the country to help with security by the end of the year unless Addis Ababa scraps a disputed port deal with the breakaway region of Somaliland, a senior Somali official said on Monday. Security experts and foreign diplomats said the move risks further destabilizing Somalia as local forces would be unable to fill the security vacuum which would likely be exploited by fighters from Al-Shabaab and affiliated of an Al-Qaeda. At least 3,000 Ethiopian soldiers are stationed in the Horn of Africa country as part of an African Union peacekeeping mission 
Atmis fighting Al Shabaab, which controls large portions of Somalia, while an estimated 5,000 to 7,000 are stationed in several regions under a bilateral agreement. Relations between Mogadishu and Addis Ababa. Earlier this year, after landlocked Ethiopia agreed to lease 20 kilometers of coastline from Somaliland, a part of Somalia which claims independence and has had effective anatomy autonomy since 1991, but has failed to win international recognition. Ethiopia offered Somaliland possible recognition in exchange of being allowed to set up a naval base and commercial port, a move Mogadishu has called illegal. If they do not repeal the agreement before the end of June, or when the new mandate of the mission is decided, all Ethiopian troops, Atmis and Bilateral will have to go, Somalia's national security advisor Hussein Sheikh Ali told Reuters by phone. Spokespeople for the Ethiopian government and the the Ethiopian National Defense Forces did not respond to the request for comment. The African Union Transition Mission in Somalia, Atmis, which is mandated by the UN Security Council, is due to fully withdraw and hand over security responsibilities to the Somali state by the end of 2024. But the Somali government has requested several times for the withdrawal of troops to be slowed down, citing setbacks in the battlefield, the troops come from Burundi, the Djibouti, Uganda, Kenya, and Ethiopia. A new, smaller peacekeeping mission is expected to be announced by the end of June, with Somalia requesting that Ethiopia not be among the troop contributing countries, according to African Union and African diplomats familiar with the plan.